We first discovered it while camping. Me and my friend Dave were both experienced campers and liked to go every weekend. Instead of booking a spot on a campground, we prefer to go out into a random spot in the woods and see what we can find. We usually drive out on a small highway somewhere, pull over, get out, and start walking. Irresponsible, I know, but this was the only real escape we got from our boring office jobs. One weekend, it seemed like everything would go as normal. We threw our gear into Dave's SUV and hit the road. This time, we went further than we ever had before. After about a million turns and three hours of driving, we eventually ended up on a small, two-lane dirt road surrounded by a wooded area. Let's stop here, I suggested. Seems as good a place as any. Dave agreed. So we got our huge backpacks out of the car and began walking. After walking for a couple hours, we found it. A large 20 meter across river tumbling through the landscape. A small sign next to it said, in faint writing, Daemonium River. Looks like a good place to camp, Dave commented. I started to look for firewood while Dave set up the tent. When I came back, I saw Dave holding a bottle of water. He was about to take a sip. Where did you get that? I asked. I took it from the river. I used a water tablet, so it's safe. He responded. We brought water bottles, remember? I reminded him. Oh, I forgot about that. Well, this shouldn't go to waste. He took a sip. This tastes kind of strange. He dumped it out next to his chair. Everything seemed fine the rest of the night. We cooked dinner over the fire and had a couple of drinks. At around 10 p.m., we decided to go to bed. After all, we had to wake up early for tomorrow. I woke up in the middle of the night. I checked my watch, but it didn't seem to be working. It wasn't stuck on a specific time. Instead, the hands spun around wildly, way too fast to be normal. I figured it must have been broken. That's when I heard it, coming from the river, splashing, accompanied by terrible gulping noises. We had brought bear spray in case of bears, and I grabbed it. I looked next to me. Dave wasn't in the tent. Cautiously, I looked outside. The first thing I saw was the moon. Before I went to sleep, it was a crescent moon. Now, it was a full moon, giving off a deep crimson red light. The river was the same crimson color, like it was filled with paint or blood. Near the sign was Dave, taking great gulps of the putrid water. Dave, hello? I called out nervously. He spun around. He was smiling. It was such a wide smile I could see every last one of his teeth. His eyes were so open and bloodshot. I thought they might pop right out of their sockets. He stood up and shambled towards me. I was frozen in fear. I noticed that he had grown a good three feet taller than he was last night. Taste it, he rasped shoving a chiseled goblet filled with the red water. It will cleanse you. I didn't know what else to do. I just ran. I ran through the woods. I needed to make it back to the car. I looked behind me to see him lurching after me. His eyes were completely red now, and his teeth were stained the color. He was howling as if he was in pain. Come back, he screeched. You must taste it. I didn't answer. I just ran farther and farther. Eventually, I couldn't hear his footsteps behind me anymore. I looked behind me and he was gone. I didn't stop running. I ran and ran until I arrived at a clearing. I stopped and I saw it, our campsite. How did I end up here? 
I ran in a straight line. What was going on? And where was Dave? My final question was answered as I felt two hands grip my shoulders. Then Dave spoke. You do not just need to drink it. No, no. You must let it consume you. He led me to the river. Suddenly, thousands of hands appeared out of the water, clawing all around. The hands looked terrifying. They were completely skeletal. A million voices came out of the river. Sacrifice, they all proclaimed. Dave was about to push me in when I remembered something. The bear spray. It was still in my pocket. I pulled it out, aimed behind me, and sprayed. Dave screamed in terror. He let go of me and started clawing his eyes out. Blood started gushing out of them. In a panic, I pushed Dave into the river. He screamed even louder as the thousands of skeletal hands gripped him and dragged him down into the depths. After this, the hands receded, the water changed back to a blue color, and the moon returned to normal. I ran in the direction of the car. I didn't stop. Not even for a second. After several hours, I made it there. I got in and drove away. The disappearance of Dave is still being investigated. I told the police that he just got lost in the woods collecting firewood. And thankfully, they believed that. I told them the location of our campsite. However, they were very confused. They found all of our gear and our tent. But there wasn't a river.